guys like uh, Terry Norris, Reggie Johnson, those good guys. Just, like, for me to be here in the Hall of Fame, when I was a little kid, I, was, I mean, when I was young, I'd be here in the Hall of Fame. 1990, I couldn't imagine being here. It's for me to be here in the Hall of Fame. I just want to thank y'all for welcoming, welcoming me. And, uh, I want to come in here every, every year for the rest of my life if I can. I want to thank you guys. I want to see you here to share the weekend with your son. Yeah, my little son, 70. He's my 70 year old son. I'll give him a wave. We need that little. Yeah, we'd like to open up some questions. Right up front. How you doing, William? Thank you for coming. I'd like to know, uh, what did you think of your fight with Tito, and was he the hardest puncher that you fought? Yeah, we you know how to Tito. I think uh, I, that, that fight then pretty much hurt me. I, I put my, my, my crib on the decline of that fight. Uh, that was kind of hurt me inside. I know I could have won that fight. As far as it being the hardest puncher, I would say yes. But you know, I, I also want to bring up the, you know, the legal hand wrapping that Bernard Hopkins exposed me to fight right after that. And uh, I don't know how that went, but him, I, I know I've been punched hard a lot. A lot. You know, Peter Manasio, who else get the green? He got the crack too. So. Uh, yeah, that, that, that fight then, the Philip Chitty had fight with the fight then. Uh, pretty much hurt me. I don't know who won that fight. But like I said, I didn't have the right people around me at the time. I changed my surroundings. And that's very important to the person's career. Fight is great. Keep good people around you. People that can with you from the beginning. That's what I did do at that time. Question on here. I'd like to talk a little bit, William, about. Uh, what it was like to fight uh, Lennon and Roberto Duran? Oh, he was my idol. He was kind of hurt. I was hurt. You know what I mean? Uh, he had his time. And I, actually, we, we, before that fight, we fought the Las Vegas Hilton, Las Vegas. And we, we did road work together a couple, a couple of days before the fight. And it was like a sad victory. It was a sad victory. But, um, you, know, you know the business. Um, I love Roberto Duran. He's my idol. I look up to him and I always would. But I had to do that too. It was almost along the same lines as Terry Norris and Sugar Ray at the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, with that same yeah. idol. Yeah, it was my idol. I remember that, that fight was in 91. The question right over there. Hey, well, how you doing, Stan? How you doing? All right. You, um, you fought uh, Bernard Hopkins throughout your time as well. And if you seen in that fight, like, it kind of frustrated you. What happened in that fight? Again. It seemed in that fight that like he kind of frustrated you. What what happened in that fight? What happened in the fight with Bernard Hopkins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You uh, said you seemed like he frustrated, that you were very frustrated. In the middle rounds. I can't remember, but um, I but I do remember I just couldn't. I, oh yeah, I should have told you. They'll remember more about your fights than you will. <laughs> I, I never prefaced the whole thing. I can't exactly remember, but I do remember I just couldn't. He fought a good fight. Robert, Robert. I always say Bernard Hopkins is better. Bernard is 50 now. He's better in his old age than he was when he was in his 20s. He's a craftier fighter. We used to, we used to work a lot in the early 90s. But I just know that during that fight, he, he took away my, my strength. My strength was well strong. I, I couldn't get off. Fight. So maybe that's that's yeah, what be when I got yeah, yeah. true frustration, but he took away yeah, something yeah. from when I, when, I, when I wanted to turn left, I couldn't. So I remember that. Well, we, we've been talking uh, so far throughout the weekend too, and trying to get as, as much insight as we can on your feeling. But just being out of the game four years, and you saw the, the game change, and we talked about it, the money game compared to the days of even Mickey Warden or Turtle Gotti, if you 
had to put value on those lights. Great and, fight, great you fight. Know, and had all the pay-per-view connected to those lights. Either. Those lights you probably couldn't even value. You know, they, 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 those guys deserved a $200 million a piece. I don't know. And, and, but uh, if you want to talk a little bit about what your feelings were on the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight, uh, you know, is it leading up to all the excitement and hype? And, uh, just give us your insight on what you feel. Truly and honestly, from my heart, I was upset. I wanted to see it. Leading up to that fight, all the hype. You know, we all been wanting to see that fight for years now. For a decade. And, um, and it wasn't, it wasn't all that it was, that we thought it would be. You know, we were looking for a 1981, you remember the Sugar Ray Leonard, Tom Harris fight? We were looking for a fight like that. And I was upset. I remember, um, I dropped by a friend's house unexpectedly, who, who was not in the boxing. And I asked her to order a fight, because I was far from home. And she said, no, I don't want to fight for $100 or $90 something. I gave her a $100 bill, I wanted to order the fight. She ordered it. To see that, I was upset. <laughs> and so I, I, I spent $100 on the fight. And then my house was 100, 100, 100 miles away. 100 miles away. <laughs> it was crazy. And, um, but Mayweather, I mean, Mayweather's a great fighter. Pacquiao's a great fighter. And, um, Mayweather's a technician. Sometimes, how can I, how can I put it? Um, Mayweather's a technician. He's going to win the fight. He's going to pick you apart. And sometimes, it's boring to, 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 to the public, the way he fights. But, he, to, but someone who really knows boxing, it's, it's, it's art, it's art, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's boring to some people, like you, you got non-fighters not really into boxing, they want to see a brawl, toe to toe, blow for blow. Mayweather, not here, he's going to pick you apart, he's going to win the fight. But someone who knows boxing appreciates that, you know what I'm saying? But someone who really doesn't understand boxing, they want to see it. That's why Mike Tyson, you know, he's like, he got somebody that can hurt you know, like, you know, So, that was the downside of it. Uh, but it, like I said, Mike, uh, they went for a great fight. Uh, he didn't give, up, he didn't give Pacquiao an opportunity to get off, because every time Pacquiao got the best, the least, they were gone. And then he stayed behind the jab. I, I appreciate it. And again, I think you touched upon it, which I think uh, adds to a lot of the sense of disappointment. But, and I think, uh, we're trying to you know, get to keep the discussion going, but, and uh, i just like to facilitate the discussion, but it, it, it seems that the money took over the event. You know, in other words, uh, uh, just like you said, you know, she said, I ain't getting $100 to see that fight, so I'm getting $100. We wanted to see it. Then once we paid our ticket, well, somehow we were disappointed. And then I said to, to one of the you know, analysts, I said, well, what ultimately would it have taken for the whole public to say, oh, that was, that was worth the money? You know, our expectations, you go in in anything with expectations, but, but I think when the money ruled the event, the spectacle, the celebrities, uh, uh, there was another guy that said, oh, a guy told me he spent $5,000 on a ticket to see the, to the event, but it was a package. So he was there Tuesday for some fight thing, Wednesday for some, and he said, well, what would you think of the fight? He goes, ah, I don't know, I just wanted to go for the whole, whole thing, you know. Like, yeah. So, um, you know, I think there's more that, that uh, interweaves into this particular event. And, and yesterday we had Richard Steele and Kenny Bayless, who was the referee, and, and they gave us some insight on, you know, even what you said as well, we've been waiting for this fight, so to, to wait five years, those fighters aren't the same fighters if we would have got the fight five years earlier, but yet the money brought it to this big spectacle, so our expectations were still of what we wanted from five years ago, but we were kind of let down a little bit, but then you start to analyze and say, well listen, Mayweather wasn't changing anything, he'd been doing this to everybody uh, along the way, so uh, you know, we want to just talk a little bit, as you were, but, but you know, the, almost the money took over the, the event as opposed to ultimate. And I don't know if we all ever would have been satisfied on any level unless it was 
Mayweather knocked down a few times and came back or something else. I don't know what it was, what we were looking for, but we, you know, but like you said, a, a, a great envy like a, like a Leonard Hearns or, you know. Well, you know, all the money that was uh, involved in this fight, I expected, I expected to see a better fight. Not saying it was a bad fight, but Mayweather fought a uh, smart fight. But we expected, but expectation is the mother of disappointment. And I uh, mean, that's just also true. It wasn't going to change his game, his style. He did what he had to do to win. Uh, we paid the ticket. We paid the ticket. <laughs> and uh, I don't know about, uh, they, they brought up uh, Pacquiao's shoulder being injured on uh, But we asked, we asked Kenny Bayless that yesterday. And, uh, and Kenny was never notified of any injury. He didn't detect any injury through the fight. He didn't check the box or something. Well, he, Kenny said he was never shown anything about there was a potential injury. And then he said he would check on the corners, whether it be every other round. Or, and and uh, Freddie uh, Roach never once said, uh, you know, my guy's hurt. And so, so he said there was never any, even as a referee, a sense at all. He's, uh, he's not throwing something correctly or... And he said it yesterday, he said, I, I didn't detect anything, I was never told anything. I checked in the corners, nobody ever said anything. I was out after the, after the whole thing. So it was just, it was interesting to you know, get that inside that He didn't even say like, well, geez, you know, William always plays like this, and oh, William's not throwing that punch or so. He said he never picked up on anything. Well, I know, I know, I really, I don't know if it's short of danger. But I do know that if you go back and do you got, any of you guys remember the Oscar De La Hoya Pacquiao fight? Pacquiao, Shane Moldy Pacquiao, and when Pacquiao got in position to unleash, they were there. I mean, they were there to get hit with his, 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 uh, his combination he was throwing. But every time he got in position to throw punches at Mayweather, Mayweather was out of there. So he took away his strength. And, and I mean, watch the fight. And I tell my son, I said, no. he was soon, as soon as Pacquiao got position on these, they were gone. Then he stayed behind that tent. He fought a small fight. I don't know if his shoulder was injured, but Mayweather fought the fight that he had to fight, that we had to fight to win. To win. And I appreciate that, but I did want to see a better fight. I want to see some more, you know, total, total, blow, blow. You know, like the Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard can take chances. Yeah. Sugar Ray Leonard can go out there and um, give people what they want. In my opinion, there's no fight like the Sugar Ray Leonard fight. He really is the best that I've did it in my life. And um, Fred Miller was a great fighter. I'm looking forward to seeing him fight again. Manny Pacquiao as well. I want to see him fight again too. Uh, that's in the past now, so we got to move on. William, question right over here. Uh, William, I was just curious, you were uh, involved in some really big Don King cards that just seemed to go on forever. There's, I remember that fight when you had fought uh, Bernard Hopkins. Uh, that was just a stacked card in Atlantic City. We don't see that too often anymore. Um, also, I was wondering, you were involved in the middleweight tournament. Um, do you miss those days? Do you like that idea of tournaments? We had the Bantamweight tournament that Showtime did a few years ago and the Super Six. Um, what do you think about that? those kind of things, like um, the, the real big stack cards? We tend to see like now there's one good fight and then just a lot of smaller undercard fights. But Don King used to do things big. Um, do you miss those days? Yes, of course I miss them. Yeah, I think they should be more of that. The Super Six Middleweight Army the War won that. Uh, that, was, that was great. It's, I think it sparks, sparks people's interest to see that, to see who's the best. Because people want to see, like, thinking back to the old days, they had just one champion, and people want to see who's the best. And uh, doing that will show, give the people what they want. And you know, you got to give the people what they want. That's what it's all about. Question right here. How you doing, Mr. Joplin? How you doing? Thank you for coming. I just wanted to ask you, uh, what was your biggest accomplishment in boxing, and if uh, if boxing saved your life? Uh, my, big, my biggest accomplishment in boxing was when I won the title in Yokohama, Japan, back in '96. 
Yeah, just this, this, this go across the world, across that uh, 20 hour on the plane to be exact, to, to Japan and uh, bring back that title. And I remember when I went over there, and we were a guy with, uh, his name was Shinji Takai, he was a world champion. He, uh, when I went there, we got into the ring, and they gave him his trophies and plaques before the fight even started. He had already won. So, you know, for me to open up that, he'd be coming to the title. That was my greatest because I had, I had to, well, in all my fights, that's gonna take me to the next level. But that was uh, my uh, most meaningful fight right there when I won the title in '96. Well, I, mean, I think you touched upon another point. I'd like to keep talking about it, but and, and it seems we, we follow this theme in the last uh, handful of years. It tends to, again, when the money starts to come in uh, heavy, heavy nowadays compared to the past, uh, the basic uh, premise that give the people what they want. And it seems we kind of got away from that, and it's more of what is going to make the most money or, or what works well for the promoters and, and uh, we were talking about different weight classes and guys coming in to make a, a weight at a fight but then they can't really be that weight so the, the next day they blow up uh, 12, 15 pounds or more. Uh, it's almost like we're, we're, we're degrading even the weight classes and not s truly sticking to who's next in line and who should be next in line and, and it just seems it's what's going to work well or set up fight to get to that next fight. And, uh, you can talk a little bit about that. It seems that we're, uh, throughout, through the game nowadays, uh, we're not giving the people ultimately what they want. Yeah, that's the key. That's the key to give uh, people what they want. Without the people, what? There's nothing. Um, like I said before, we're going to take it back at uh, about the middle weight tournaments and Super 6. People want to see who's the best at, who's the best welterweight, who's the best middleweight, who's the best lightweight, super white, flyweight, whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, and that's what the people want to see. And, um, if we don't do that, the game goes down. But I think, uh, what's the fight coming up? Uh, Miguel Cotto and uh, Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez. That, that, that's a, that's gonna be, I, I cannot wait to see that fight. I think that fight right there really uh, uplifted the sport of boxing. That, 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 that fight, Canelo Alvarez is a great fight. I love it. And I love it. I'm getting photo. But I'm looking forward to that fight. Uh, William, um, what have you been doing since you retired? How's life been? And and what's the camaraderie like uh, between retired fighters? Like, do you keep up with some of the guys that you uh, do when you were fighting? And by the way, you're from DC, I'm from Baltimore, so I see you home. Yeah, exactly. um, yeah what, I, what I've been doing uh, since retired, I've been, I've been in the gym. Uh, I do a lot of personal training, and I, I teach some classes, boxing classes. I like that at a different gym, one hour long boxing class. I specialize in cardio. You know, you, when you finish one of my classes, you're going to lose, you're going to, uh, 600, or 600 calories. You know, it's an awesome class, I'm chasing my video. I do a lot of personal training, that's what I'm doing. Well, right now, I'm also getting the motivation to speak. And I want to talk, you know, while we reach out to the youth coming up, trouble youth, and uh, I want to talk about how to make it, not just in sports, but anything. Do. I want to talk about making it to success and maintain it once you get there. Because a lot of people make it to reach their goals and they get comfortable. Like I said, comfort then leads to success. And I want to uh, apply my own experience. Uh, once I became world champion, it was dedicated, then I got a little, got a little comfort. And then once you get comfortable, that's when you can start to decline. You got to get a high point, you sit and get the Hungry. That's why he's still doing it. Um, you got to always remember where you were before you got, uh, before you got to, that, to that level. And uh, you keep that same hunger. You can take to the level. You keep the level, the next level, the next level. And I can always, you know, hop with that.
that an example. So I just, my, my story is to talk to kids that stay dedicated to good people around you. Uh, man, good Greek, whatever your, your devils are. And uh, once you get there, stay humble. Because once you get comfortable, you're going to go to William over here, uh, Lady A's been in my ear all day for the concern about the, the weight classes that I touched upon. I'd just like to ask you uh, this question uh, concerning the uh, Canelo uh, Alvarez and Cotto fight coming up. Yeah, being that uh, Miguel Cotto is not a true middleweight, right? Um, what weight class do you see that fight being fought at? Um, he, he didn't make 160. And uh, Canelo Alvarez is a junior, junior middleweight. So what weight class do you see that being fought at? You said Miguel Cotto didn't make 160. He didn't make 160. He hasn't yet. So I'm asking you, what weight class do you see that fight being fought at? 154. 154. All right. So junior middle, you see? Okay. And the reason why I say that, I can almost look at a. I can before you tell me, I can almost look at a fight. Know what his weight class is. Those two guys, they look like 154 pounds. And I just, I see, I see the bomb here at 154 pounds. I think I was in 10th grade when I was 154. <laughs>